The Romance of the Ranchos. Santa Fe, 1841. Americans flee revolution in New Mexico. Los Angeles, 1841. First American party arrives in Southern California. Los Angeles, 1845. Bandit Joaquin killed by posse. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, dramatizing the great events and famous people responsible for the growth of our Southern California from the days of the dawns to the present. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, recreates another fascinating chapter in The Romance of the Ranchos. Some years ago, a writer in a national magazine made this amazing statement. Los Angeles, he wrote, is a city without a past. It has no memories because it has nothing to remember. And he further said that life without a past, without a sense of permanence, lacks fullness and reality, which is, of course, very true. But to call Los Angeles, by and by implication Southern California, a community without a past could hardly be more incorrect. Few areas have histories as long and rich and colorful as has Southern California. The contribution of such a history to our living today can be realized to the full only when it is known and fully appreciated by the majority of citizens, particularly those of the younger generations. So it is that Title Insurance and Trust Company hopes that these broadcasts will help Southern Californians to get more out of life in this Southland by being familiar with its golden past. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to tell us the story. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight we're going to tell you the first half of a truly remarkable life story. It's the story of a man who stands out as one of the greatest of the early American pioneers who helped to make California a part of the United States. And his life is typical of many other men like him. I speak of Benjamin David Wilson, first American mayor of Los Angeles and a civic leader for many years. He helped to found Pasadena owned the land which became Riverside and Westwood Hills, had streets and boulevards named after him, and furnished Mount Wilson with its name. There is so much to tell, we've decided to devote two programs to the task. And tonight, we present the first. It's a truly thrilling chapter in the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> The adventurous life of Benjamin David Wilson began 130 years ago on December the 1st, 1811, in Nashville, Tennessee. Eight years later, his father died, leaving the family poor. A few years after that, at Yazoo City, near Vicksburg, a doctor paid a call on Benjamin D. Wilson. <laughs> oh, 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 that's awful stuff. <laughs> this ain't exactly supposed to taste good. I hope I don't have to take much of that. Yes, yeah, son, you might have to. Uh, you mean that... You're I... pretty sick, son. In fact, well, in fact, your health has broken down generally. What do you mean broken down? Well, I just get a little sick, and then you're you should... more than a little sick, son. You've had too much on your shoulders, a boy like you. Well, that's silly. I've been taking care of myself for some time now. Maybe huh? that's it. How old are you, son? Me? Well, I'm, I'm almost sixteen. And here you are, working from dawn till dusk, running a trading business with the Indians, wearing yourself to the bone. You ought to be out in the air playing, growing up. What do you mean I am grown up? You ain't had a chance to grow up, son. Oh, I have so. I'm a man. I can take care of myself. My health's all right, but... Yeah. <laughs> Just listen to me. All right, son. It ain't the work, then. Maybe it's the climate. This river damp getting in you clear to the bones. Whatever it is, you ain't got much to look forward to around here. You mean uh, I might die? I ain't saying yes, and I ain't saying no. If I was you, I'd settle up things here and get away. It ain't right for a fine strapping youngster like you to glue on yourself like you're doing. You get away, but where'd I go? I don't rightly know. I Somewhere with this clean, dry air to breathe. Lots of sunshine and light. Uh, out west, maybe? Lord, do you mean the Indian country? I didn't suggest nothing like that. 
You'd better stay here and die on your bed as to get killed by them red devils. Yeah, I'm not afraid of that. Heck, I've been hearing a lot about that country from the folks on the Missouri packets. It ain't as bad as some folks think. Now, listen here, son. I'm advising you to leave this country here. But I didn't say nothing about the Indian country. I'm a doctor. I'm advising you to go somewhere where it's healthy. Well, if I'm going anywhere, I'm going where I can do something, where there's adventure and excitement. Yep, Doc. If I'm going to go anywhere, I'm going out west. And I am going. <laughs> Young Benjamin Wilson settled up his business and headed west. Joining the Rocky Mountain Fur Company in Missouri, he made the hazardous journey across the plains and arrived in the little Mexican town of Santa Fe in 1833. There he joined a party of trappers on an expedition to the Gila Valley. On his return to Santa Fe, he talked one day to another young man. You see, Maxwell, with my knowledge of the country down there in the Gila Valley, there's no reason why we can't trade for ourselves instead of riding other people's coattails. In other words, you want to form your own company. That's it. There's a fortune to be made in beaver skins. And there's no reason why we can't do it as well as the next fellow. Well, I don't know, Ben. I never thought much about leaving Santa Fe. I think I'd just leave, stay right here. Well, why? With the whole wide west beckoning to a man with some gumption? Why do you want to stay cooped up in this little town? Well, I'm getting along comfortable. Oh, man, don't you want to get anywhere and make something more of yourself than this? I'm doing all right. I ain't risking my neck on the trail. Risking your neck? Why, man, what's there to be afraid of? Maybe nothing, maybe plenty. For one thing, the Mexican government ain't particularly fond of us Americans, you know. It's against their laws for us to be trapping here in New Mexico. There's no real reason why we shouldn't be allowed to carry on a legitimate business. And as long as it is legitimate, I stand on my rights as a free American citizen to, to carry on my business. Yeah, well, just so the Mexican governor doesn't hear you say that. Ah, uh, the Mexican governor has his hands full with the Apaches without worrying about us. Yeah, and what about the Apaches? Well, what about them? They're our friends. They like Americans. They're wars with the Mexicans. Yeah, that's now. And they might change their minds any time. And then it would be all white men, Americans as well as Mexicans. Yeah, not as long as Juan Jose is alive and leading them. You know, I've met him. He's a fine man. He's educated by whites, and he's friendly to us. Now, if the Mexicans hadn't murdered his father, well, he'd be friendly to them, too. Well, maybe. Uh, now, look, Maxwell, there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> You're crossing your bridges before you come to them. Now, I'm going to take an expedition out on the plains with or without you. Now, if you want in on the profits, well, then you're welcome. So what do you say? Are you with me? Well, I guess so. I'll go. But I got a feeling that we're not going to have easy sailing. <laughs> Maxwell's foreboding was prophetic, but the young merchant's expedition was ill-timed. It was on the return journey toward Santa Fe that the men first noticed something strange. Yeah, I can't make it out. Well, there's another on the hill ahead. Must be two miles. Oh, yeah. They're Apache signal fires, all right, and, and look at them. A whole line stretching away at regular intervals. They're beyond the horizon to the north. But what could it be? What are they up to? Oh, I don't know. Must be important news. There's a village up ahead there. We'll find out there. I don't like this. I'm glad we sent the others on ahead with our goods. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Hey, hi there, Tucker. Kick up those mules. Yes, sir. Here we are, just the three of us. How could we defend ourselves? What in blaze are you talking about? Defend ourselves from what? Oh, I don't know, but... Listen, what's that? Hey, whoa, whoa. Listen. The drums. The patchy drums. Yeah. It's from the village. I don't like this. You need it to either. That's a war dance. Ben, you don't suppose... Yeah, I don't know. Look, look at them coming from out of the canyon. The Apaches painted. Holy smokes. They're out for trouble. Ben, what do we do? What can we do? Three against a hundred? Stand still and surrender to them. Let's see what all this is about. Oh, friend. Hey, stop, let me go. Hey, the time is up. See, you fellas are mistaking us for somebody else. We're Americans, you understand? No Americans. Mistake, no. We hunt Americans. Well, what's the trouble? We're your friends. We... No Americans, no friends. Well, listen, I'm a friend of your chief, Juan Jose. Huh? Juan Jose, dead. Surely understand 
as this one who's he was murdered by a treacherous American, I feel as badly about as you do. That's no reason for the Apaches to declare war on all Americans. Yeah, me no. The braves no care. They cry for scalp. They want kill all white men. Yeah, but we've been your friends. We've helped you. Me no. Me sorry. Me try tell them. They no listen. Oh, but you're their chief. Me now. tell them no. Me not be chief anymore. That is no use. We're doomed. We're doomed. Quiet, Max. We'll pull yourself together. We're not finished yet. Already. Other tribes kill whole camps Americans. My braves not be without scalp, too. No can stop them. Well, this is something you must stop. Or your whole tribe is doomed. You can't make war on the white man and win. No. Yeah. No can stop them. Yeah, but you could help us to get away. Me mm, like to, but... But but if the braves found out, eh? Yeah, I know. Well, uh, no matter. They not find out. Me help. You will? Oh, Chief, God bless you. Wait. Me see how much time left. Uh, look. What are they doing in that wood? Is it... They're building a fire. Yeah, big fire. Lord, then they're going to burn us. Burn us alive. Calm down, man. Now, stop it. They're not going to burn us. We're going to get away. I got an idea. Now, Chief, could you get these two men away safely if all the warriors were drawn outside the camp? Uh, could give them ponies. Get away down canyon. All right, then. You give me ten minutes and the camp will be empty. But, Ben, what are you going to do? I'm going to make a break for it. Throw them off into the hills up there. Oh, man, what are you saying? You'll be killed. They'll get you sure. I don't think so. Anyway, it'd be better than roasting to death out there. And maybe... Maybe we'll all have a chance. I won't let you do it. If anybody's going to do it, I will. Oh, on that sprained ankle of yours? Oh, forget it, man. You just tend your own getaway and I'll manage all right. I got you into this, now I'm going to get you out of it. Uh, take buffalo skin. Keep warm. Oh, well, thank you, Chief. And I'll remember this. If you ever need anything, you can find me at Santa Fe. Mm. Ben, you can't do this. Yeah. Good luck, men. Bye. Ben, wait. Ben, come back. Bye. Tucker, look, he's going. Ben, uh, Ben. Quiet. No noise yet. They no see him. Oh, they do now. Look at them. They're starting at them. Run, Ben, run! If him get to hill, run, find ben. hiding place. Run! I think he's going to make it. Look, there he goes. Into the rocks. He's there. Him be safe now. Find hiding place. Oh, but they're going in after him. They might... Come. No time talk now. Ponies in back teepee. Run fast. Make safe. Go. Go now. Oh, but Ben... Him do this for you. Make safe. Go now or trick no good. Go! Uh, yes, you're right. Come on, Tucker. Let's go. And may God protect him. Lying motionless in a crevasse of a canyon, Wilson waited for the Apaches to give up the search. One, two, three hours he lay, listening to the ominous tread of nearby feet. Finally, as night wrapped the plains in blessed darkness, he left his sanctuary and started on foot for Santa Fe, 100 miles away. Four days later, he wearily stumbled into the town to find that the Apache War was on in earnest, a war which was to last almost half a century. He heard no word of Maxwell and Tucker. Until late one night, he received a visitor in his quarters at Santa Fe. Yeah? Who is it? Yeah, me. Well, Chief, what are you doing here? Come see you, Wilson. Well, of course. Come on in here. What are you doing in Santa Fe? Come see you. Oh, I don't understand it. Aren't you with your tribe? No more. No more, Chief. You, you mean because of what you did for us? Mm-hmm. Sorry. No matter. You, other men, got away. Not killed. Best that way. Well, then they did get away safely. Uh, right? They hit for Chihuahua. Oh, I'm glad for that, but you, you all right? All right, but I'm hurt. Well, they hurt you, huh? Oh, that's bad. Well, that arm's broken. We'll have to get it fixed up right away. Not bad hurt. Eh, it doesn't matter. We'll have it fixed up in chief. You saved my life. And from now on, uh, I'm taking care of you. Uh, big job. <laughs> Wilson never saw Maxwell again. For a few years, Wilson carried on his business in Santa Fe, but a revolution took place and Armijo took over the Mexican governorship of New Mexico. His special hatred was for Americans, and in the summer of 1841, matters were fast coming to a head. All right, come on, men. Barricade the doors and the windows. Get the guns from the shelf. There's no telling what they'll do. What chance have we? Only 20 of us against Ooh. that mob. These riots are getting worse, Ben. Armijo is working them up into a fury against us. What's he telling them? Tell them that the Americans in Texas are organizing an expedition to march into New Mexico and take it over. Mm, and it's true, too. Sure, it's true. How he found out, I don't know. A lot of good it'll do us for them to come. Before they can get here, we'll be goners. Yeah, yeah. From the sound of that mob out here, we may be goners before very long at all. We've got to get out of here, Ben. We've been talking about going to California. Well, now's the time to do it. We may not get another chance. Mm, it looks like you may be right there. Ben, Bill, they're coming this way. Get your guns. We may have to fight for it. They're out for blood. Well, we're ready for them. Are all the Americans here? Yep, about 20 of us. Yeah, we might have a chance of standing them off. From the sound of that mob, I doubt it. Well, wait a minute. My ears going bad? They sound like they're getting farther away. Well, wait a minute. I believe you're right. They are getting fainter. But only a minute ago, they were headed this way. 
Looked like nothing could stop him. I don't understand. Who is it? Uh, me. Well, it's my old friend, Chief Mangus. Uh, just a minute. Come on in here, Chief. What's going on out there? No trouble now. People go away. No bother you now. But how? Why? Mostly Pueblo Indians. Chief, your friend. Me make sign. Him tell him you're not here. They go somewhere else. But then, this is the second time you've saved our lives. And I thank you. No easy again. You better go. Mm, sure, right. Uh, gentlemen, we better go. We'll get our things together as fast as possible and head for California. I'm with you, gentlemen. Workmen, you make the arrangements and leave, leave right away. Right. Come on, men, now. Hey, boys. Me say goodbye. Why not come with us, Chief? Me stay here. But maybe you take Indian boy, Lorenzo. Him want to go. Why, well, sure, I'll take Lorenzo. And you too, if you want. No, me stay. Lorenzo go California. He watch over white friend, like me. You good man, Wilson. Indian like. Well, thank you. Someday I hope to do something for your people. To repay what you've done for me. Across the plains, the first party of Americans came. William Workman, John Rowland, Lemuel Carpenter, Wilson, and the others. Across parched deserts and lofty mountains. And then one day, in November 1841, they came in sight of the fertile valleys of Southern California. Look at that. Why, that's as green as I've ever seen. That looks like paradise to me. Paradise on earth. Yeah. Man, I can hardly wait to buy a patch of that emerald green and settle down for the rest of my life. How about you, Ben? Oh, it's pretty all right, but I don't aim to settle just yet. There's lots more places to go. Lots more adventure. I'm going places where I can do things. <laughs> well, Ben, from all I've been told about this place, I'd be willing to lay you a little bet. I'll bet before you're through, you'll settle down here, live, die, and be buried here. I'll have to wait a long time. But by golly, I'll collect that bet. <laughs> Most of the titles to land in Southern California are based originally on the early day grants issued by the King of Spain and later by the Mexican government a century or more ago. Records of those original grants and of every subsequent transfer of ownership of every square foot of land in Los Angeles County are the implements by means of which Title Insurance and Trust Company carries on its work. Abstracts of literally millions of documents and legal instruments are contained in the company's vast system of records, or title plant, in the main office at 433 South Spring Street in Los Angeles. Every day there is gathered information from some 50 public offices, including abstracts of approximately 1,500 newly recorded instruments in the county recorder's office. This information is daily added to the files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. The purpose of all this record-keeping is to enable the Title Insurance and Trust Company to provide you with prompt and accurate service whenever it is necessary to establish the true ownership of any piece of land. The service includes, in addition to the searching of all records, the issuance of a policy of title insurance which ensures the completeness and accuracy of the work. Benjamin D. Wilson did not intend to settle in California. He planned to go on to China. But as time passed and he was unable to get birth on a ship, the sleepy land of the Dones began to grow on him. One day, he met his friend, John Rowan. Ben! Ben Wilson! Wait a minute. Where's this, John? I thought you were on your rancho. Came in today on business. Say, I got news for you. Oh, yeah? What news? An American frigate's in the bay at San Pedro. You can get a berth aboard her, and she's bound for China. Mm, that's so? Yep. It was a long wait, but now you finally found it. Well, I... Uh, hey, what's the matter with you? You aren't even interested. Well, I tell you, John, I'm not so sure I want to go to China. What? After all this time, and now you have your chance to change your mind? Well, where do you want to go? I'm not so sure I want to go anyplace. You mean... <laughs> that's right. Ben Wilson, the Rolling Stone. <laughs> Out for adventure. And now you're satisfied to stay in this sleepy little town. Yeah, I know. You got to laugh on me, all right. But I don't care much. I sort of like it here. You know, it's the first place I ever lived where there weren't any courts. No lawyers, no laws. They don't need them. And the people, they're honest and peaceful. Their words as good as gold, and, they, and they're friendly. I don't know what sort of homey here. What did I tell you? You'll be settling down, asking for a ranch, Nick. Yeah, I've already been talking to Don Juan Bandini about buying his Harupa Rancho. I'll be on your land there. Buying? Why, man, all you got to do is ask for one. They'll give it to you, just like they did me. 
You know, you were with me at Monterey. I know, but you had to apply for Mexican citizenship, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay an American citizen. I got ideas about that. Well, anyway, you are going to settle down and get some land, eh? Yep. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> And now that you are, you can pay up that little bet I made you. Oh, no, now. You said live, die, and be buried here. And I'm not dead yet. Not by a long shot. You'll have to wait a while, me amigo. <laughs> In 1843, Wilson bought the Huru Rancho, of which the present city of Riverside is a part, and settled down and married Ramona, the lovely daughter of Don Bernardo Yorba. In the years that followed, he became a respected ranchero, a friend of all. An American always, but a man the Californians regarded as a brother. They affectionately called him Don Benito, and that is the name by which he's been known ever since. Respect for his abilities as a man and a leader made the Californians turn to him for help in many a situation which called for responsible leadership. One such time was when he was put in charge of an expedition against the marauding Mojave Indians, whose leader, Joaquin, the terror of the outlying ranchos, was once a neophyte in a California mission. Late one afternoon, when Don Benito was riding far ahead of his party, accompanied only by his lieutenant. Don Benito, look. Yeah? What is it? Look, the Indians, four of them, riding along the arroyo. Gee, they haven't seen us yet. Come on, down into the arroyo. Yeah, but what do you intend to do? We'll hide here until they're close enough. Then we'll talk to him. But hadn't we better wait for the others? No, no, no. We'll be all right now. Just be quiet. They're coming closer. All right, come on. Up we go. Hola! Hola! You travel far in desert, senor. Uh, see, si, uh, we do. And you have no water, provision, nothing. Oh, we, uh, we left them over in the Arroyo. There is something strange here. Uh, Senor, you are Joaquin, are you not? How did you know? By the markings on your face. Who are you? What are you doing here? Joaquin, horsemen, many of them coming. Senor, you are after me. Don Benito, look out. He's got a bone arrow. Oh, oh, Don Benito. Don Benito, are you all right? Uh, I guess so. He hit his hair. He hit you. Oh, in the shoulder. Not bad. Easy. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, what about Joaquin? You got him, Don Benito. He still lives, but not for long. California is rid of one outlaw. And the others? They're riding away. But our men are in pursuit. They will be caught. Whoa, whoa. Senor. Senor. Are you all right? Yes, Lorenzo. <laughs> I can always depend on you to turn up when I need you. See, si. but Chief Mangas told me to look after white friends. You feel good? Uh, not, not very kind of thing. Senor, your shoulder is beginning to swell. I don't like the looks. Here, let me see. No need to look, Lorenzo. I can tell. You won't have to look after the white friend much longer. No. That was a poisoned arrow he shot me with. Avila. Yeah. Avila. Yes, si, senor. You are awake? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, what's happened? Where am I? <laughs> oh, you are safe in camp. Yes, but the poisoned arrow. Oh, huh? you have nothing to fear, Don Benito. You will recover. But how? How can that be? Uh, Lorenzo saved your life, senor. He took every last drop of the poison from the wound. The swelling has gone down. And the wound is healing fast. All is well. Lorenzo... For the third time, I owe my life to a faithful friend, an Indian. Somehow, sometime, I'll repay their race for their friendship. And Don Benito Wilson did repay his debt to the Indians. All through his later life, the citizens of Los Angeles called him the stepfather of all Indians. He always had a smile, a kind word, or a helpful hand for them. And finally, he was appointed Indian agent for the United States government, and he used his post to help the plight of the forgotten red men. The Indians of Southern California had no greater friend 
and Don Benito Wilson. But then, he was a friend to every man. And so it was not strange that his friends approached him one day in the early 40s with a request. But, Ben, we need you. We need somebody to look out after our interests. And you need somebody who'll look out after yours, too. So why not yourself? Oh, gentlemen, I tell you, I don't want to assume any office. In the first place, I have no right. I'm not even a Mexican citizen. Yeah, that is no matter, senor. We have no better man than you in all of the California. We Californians want you to do it, too. There you are, Ben. You can't refuse now. As long as you stay here, we'll keep after you to be alcalde of Los Angeles. Now, will you take it, or shall we run you out? Well, you'll never run me out of this country. Not till I'm carried out feet first. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's perfect, Ben. Do you realize what you said? You not only agree to be alcalde, but you settled up a little bet that you and I had. As long as you decide that you are going to live, die, and be buried here, you might as well pay up, me amigo. <laughs> <laughs> See? I will. And I'm glad to do it. Because all I hope is that I still have many more years to live and enjoy this wonderful land. Frank Graham will be back in a moment. The lives of Southland pioneers like Benjamin D. Wilson are a real inspiration to all of us. It is impossible in a half-hour program, or even in two of them, to present all of the many accomplishments and constructive activities of Don Benito. In the area that now is centered by the communities of Pasadena, Alhambra, South Pasadena, and San Marino, Don Benito Wilson is particularly well-remembered. At one time, there was a mountain, a canyon, a school, an avenue, a lake, and a mountain trail in that area, all named for him. Wilson laid out the original town of Alhambra in 1871. On his Lake Vineyard track, the second large subdivision in Pasadena, the largest orange orchards in the world up to that time were planted. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles considers it a privilege, as well as a service, to portray the lives of such men in these programs. <laughs> Now, Frank, what about next week? Well, Don Benito Wilson did live many years more to take a great part in the history of California. And so we're going to continue his dramatic life story next week. It's a thrilling adventure you won't want to miss. And so until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.